Have you got your Che Guevara t-shirt yet? I've got mine here, isn't it cool? Except it shouldn't be. Guevara, in the name of communism, killed lots of people. He said, we must eliminate all newspapers. We cannot make a revolution with a free press. Aren't we Americans supposed to favor a free press? Three years later, after Guevara helped Castro take power, he said, we executed many people by firing squad without knowing if they are fully guilty. He killed people without knowing if they were guilty. And anyway, guilty of what? Believing in capitalism? Owning a farm? It said that Che and his gangs killed thousands of people. And yet, if you go to an American teachers union protest, you see people wearing shirts like this. Um, who's on your shirt? Che. Che. Che Guevara. Yeah, of course, right. Can you tell me a little bit about Che? I know he's a revolutionary who fought for labor rights, and that's, that's why I have him on right now. He's a, a good role model for all of us in terms of, like, standing for the people. A good role model. What is she thinking? Michael Monahan writes about this for the Daily Beast. What, what's she? Wh I have no idea what she's thinking what's because she th the, fir the first thing to say is uh, he didn't fight for labor rights. The Cuban government outlawed independent labor unions when they came to power in 1959. Che Guevara, you know, within a few years set up the labor camps and the penal colonies that we saw up until we still see them now. I mean, they're slightly reduced, but and they're not as brutal as they once were, but they're still pretty brutal. And, you know, Guevara was essentially the executioner that pulled people that were considered counter-revolutionaries and had them shot. So why is he on all these T-shirts? Uh, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing. We have a it, picture of this famous model, Giselle Bunchen. She's yes. wearing Che swimwear here. Mrs. Tom Brady. Uh, yeah, and I, I suspect they probably have a lot of money that would be expropriated by Che Guevara if he had the chance. No, I mean, it's become this sort of popular thing, and you see people like um, Carlos Santana, the musician, going to an awards show with a Che Guevara shirt on, not really realizing the most basic things that Che Guevara is one it's of the... It's just that he's good looking. He was a handsome guy, but he was also banned music that was considered capitalist and decadent, like the Beatles in Cuba in the early 1960s. So these people have no idea what they're talking about. And they say, well, he's a revolutionary and, you know, he fought for poor people, et cetera. No, he actually required by his ideological fanaticism that a country, Cuba, remained poor from 1959 to today. If you go on Twitter, talk about Cuba, people talk about, oh, they're all literate. Sure. Yeah. Uh, two things you always hear is uh, literacy and health care. Um, the first thing is, you know, the literacy rate, which is uh, supposedly 99%, those numbers we get from the Cuban government, by the way, and I, they're not a very trustworthy source. Second of all, you know, what is the point of full literacy if you are not allowed to read what you want? If you have to read the turgid speeches of Fidel and Raul Castro, and, you know, that's what your literacy gets you, if you want to go to a library in Central Havana and get a copy of 1984, good luck. In 1959, when the Cuban communists took over, they overthrew a brutal and vicious dictatorship of the Batista regime. That said, the, the starting point in Cuba, literacy 70, 80 percent already, it was fairly high and they didn't have too far to go. But this is always what is said. We'll, you know, who cares about lack of a free press? They have health care and they have and they have uh, literacy. There's this hugely popular travel guide, Lonely Planet. Yes. Cuba retains a refreshing, preserved quality. It's a space that serves as a beacon for the future. Universal education, health care, and housing are rights people the world over want. A beacon for the future. It's a museum of the past is what it is, <laughs> a beacon for the future. The reason there are cute old cars there is because the country is bankrupt. Internet access, is that, is that quaint that there's no internet? We're not polluted by Twitter and all this and stuff. Yet no, they don't have access to the government controls. Communism is popular in, in Hollywood. You've got, uh, in Peru, Cameron Diaz had carried a bag with a Mao slogan on it. Yeah. Uh, the Maoist rebellion in Peru killed 70,000 people. Yeah, the shining path. I mean, I, like, I would say I'm going to cut Cameron Diaz a tiny bit of slack and just I chalk most of this stuff up to ignorance. These people that do this tend to be, you know, ex extremely wealth wealthy. And I, I think if you went and took all their money and but it's collectivized also, their it's, grain. It's, not, <laughs> it's also the concept of commune. We're all in this together. Yeah. Yeah, well, it is. The idea of communism is a very simple one. We should all share everything, right? And then we all, you know, yeah. it's a simple thing. Tr 
try explaining sort of liberal economics, classical liberal ec economics, it's a very complicated thing. That's what we try to do on I this know, show. that's why this show but exists. But it's not working. <laughs> yeah. In terms of the positive view of, ca of capitalism, it's not just the young people who don't get it. Age 30 to 49, only 50% have a positive view. 50 to 64, 53%, barely half. Yeah. No, I find myself fighting this battle all the time. I mean, you do things like globalization, which is considered this, this horrible scourge that lifts people out of poverty, have li lifted countless millions of Indians and Vietnamese and even Chinese, so they're sort of post-communist societies, out of poverty. But, you know, global globalization is a swear word. It's a very sort of complicated argument to get to the result, which is this stuff works. This stuff it is good for people. It lifts people out of misery. Yeah. Thank you, Michael Moynihan.